Hi. It is um, early morning here. Not super early, but the sun's not quite up yet. Still in my robe and I have my coffee. Second mug so far. Um, there is a question I've been asked several times recently uh, by people in person and by people on online. Um, how do you get started on the ketogenic diet? How do you get started on a low carb thing? And very simplistically, next time you eat something, don't have any carbs. That's how you start. You don't need uh, equipment. You don't need special rules other than keep your carbohydrates very low. Now, you know, I, I say that and it, it seems very straightforward, but then one has to realize that not everybody knows what a carbohydrate is. Um, there, you know, food is made up of fat, protein, or carbohydrate. So essentially, if it's not a protein or a fat, it's carbohydrate. Some foods are higher in carbohydrate than others. But if it's not a fat or a protein, for the most part, it's carbohydrate. So... And what, where does the fat and protein come? Well, you can get some fats from you know, avocado and some plant-based things. But as a general rule, if it came from something that had a face, it's a fat or a protein. If it, you know, I mean, just to put it bluntly, if it's an animal product, it's probably a fat or a protein. You can get fats like I said, in, in some plant-based products. And pretty much everything else is a carb. People say, well, I've cut out sugar, so I'm good. Well, that's good. That's an awesome first start. Sugar is the devil. We know it's the devil because it's so tempting and delicious. Mm -hmm. But sugar is not good for us. We shouldn't be eating sugar in the amounts we were, we are. We didn't before. Um, I'll try to get some statistics together and read some materials and boil them down, but we don't need sugar. We like sugar, but we're eating pounds of sugar a year and it's not right. Anyway, so people say I've cut out sugar. That is an awesome, awesome first start. But then they forget that remembering that there are only three components to food, fat, protein, carbohydrate, and if it's not a fat or protein, it's a carbohydrate. And sugar's not the only carbohydrate. Potato, rice, any grain, corn is the worst, probably. Um, no matter whether it's whole grain, super whole grain, or if you're just chewing on a stalk of wheat, it's carbohydrate. Plants are, have carbohydrate, some fewer than others. So on the ketogenic diet, the carbohydrates, which we, we which, which I, I'm going to speak for myself. I try to keep my carbs below about 20 grams a day. Um, and often I'm around 10 or 13. Hi, Atticus. Um, these would be leafy vegetables uh, or salad vegetables. And here's a good rule of thumb. If you're wondering, is it a vegetable? Can I eat it and, and be lower in carbs? If it grows below the ground, you want to avoid it as a rule. The reason for that is, plant, the reason that plant, that potato part, the carrot, the, you know, whatever, is growing below the ground, is it's a sugar storage device for the greens above the ground. That's its job. It stores starch which is sugar, which is carbohydrate. So a sweet potato is going to be high in carbohydrate. A potato potato is gonna be high in carbohydrate. Um, carrots. So again, it sounds like a broken record, but pretty much the opposite of what we've been told. You know, we've been told eat low fat, low sodium, lots of grains, and colorful fruits and vegetables. <laughs> throw all that out the window if you're if you're doing this so if it's a colorful vegetable a beet 
a carrot, a sweet potato. I, you know, you, you can think of more than I. It's probably high in sugar. So it, it is to be avoided if you can. If it grows above the ground and it's not a grain. So remember that the grains are not vegetables. They're grains. They have, you know, little things on them, you know, wheats, corn, and soy, and barley, and all that. But if it's a, if it's, here's what Dr. Westman has said, if it's a leaf, eat it. So, kale, and spinach, and radicchio, and all this other, eat it. Not, you know, not bushels full, because those carbs add up. But, a, you know, a couple of fistfuls of leafy green vegetables a day and about a fistful of non-starchy vegetables. So cauliflower is great. We now use cauliflower for everything. You know, shoot, uh, you can make pie crust or uh, pizza crust out of it, um, mashed potatoes out of it, mm, cauliflower au gratin. You can do lots of things with cauliflower. But broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, squashes, um, if you go to my blog, I'll put a link to the place. There's I've, I've printed up my version of Dr. Westman's page four, which has been updated much, but it's a good starting point. It's pretty much foods on this sheet you can eat. And if it's not on the sheet, don't eat it. So that's how you get started on the ketogenic diet. The next thing you put in your mouth, just don't have any carbs. Um, and that's what you do. Don't worry about macros that that question came up you know I don't know how to measure my macros here's what happens people get really focused on these macros you know 70% of calories from fat and 5% from carbs and you know, whatever's left over is protein here's what you do if you try to keep it simple keep your carbs under 20 grams a day so you do have to educate yourself you know get a my fitness pal is a great um, tool for tracking finding out forget about tracking you don't have to track it if you don't want to but finding out how many carbs are in an item if you just google carbs in pasta google will tell you how many grams there are lots <laughs> don't eat pasta anyway so if you keep your grams under about 20 a day of carbohydrate and you keep your protein moderate what does that mean we we kind of self-regulate that as a rule if we as humans overeat protein we tend to not feel very well we're not really designed to eat a lot of protein my dogs are Stephen Finney will tell you that dogs do well on high protein we need moderate protein we need enough protein to keep our muscles going and all the cell stuff that's happening and then the rest is fat. So if you're keeping your carbohydrates, so if you eat 100% of your calories in any day come from whatever you're eating, you know, whether it's a, you know, a pizza, full carbohydrate pizza, or a, or a very ketogenic, you know, fatty piece of steak with a half an avocado and a small salad on the side, 100% of those calories are coming from either carbohydrate, fat, or protein, right? So that's 100%. Well, if you've kept your grams of carb to under 20, there's four calories of energy in every gram of carbohydrate. So you're only going to be getting about 80 grams of energy from the carbohydrate out of your 100% of calories. If you keep your protein moderate, just kind of, you know, don't eat super lean meat if, if you can avoid it. I mean, it sounds the opposite, but... Make sure your protein comes wrapped in some nice fat that it was supposed to come with anyway. You know, a ribeye with the fat, a chicken with the skin, um, or just, you know, fatty foods that are, it's all marbled through anyway. The rest will come in fat. It'll work its way out. Listen to your body. And, and don't eat when you're not hungry. It's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. It is much easier to cut out carbohydrate than it is to only eat when hungry. I continue to struggle with it. My, um, my husband was gone for a month. He got back almost exactly a month ago. 
in the month he was gone, I lost 9.1 pounds or 8.1 pounds. I can't remember. Well, at my stage of the game, when I've lost 91.8 pounds now, to have lost that much in a month near the end was amazing. Since he's been back, I've, I've put on a pound of that back and I've been bouncing up and down, but I haven't lost anymore. Guess why? Because I'm weak and I eat when I'm not hungry, dummy. I know better when he wasn't here and there wasn't more food around. He needs more food than I do. He's ketogenic. He's happily ketogenic, but he's very active. He's a guy. He's younger than I am. Good on me. Um, so he eats. So there's food here. So guess what I do if it's here? I eat it. I didn't do that when he wasn't here because there wasn't that much food here. And I was fine. I was not missing it. So I'm, I continue to struggle. Anyway, don't eat carbohydrate. Keep your protein moderate. That's about, I don't know, I'm probably eating three or four, three ounces of actual protein a day. This I, I did have to figure out by tracking. You say, that's not much. That's yeah, that much ribeye. Well, sometimes that is that much ribeye if I'm really not hungry. But keep in mind that if you're eating a fatty cut of meat, you're not eating three ounces of protein in a fatty cut of meat. You're eating half of that as fat or a third of it as fat. So that takes a little getting used to. But listen to your body. Don't worry about, don't worry about the macros if you, unless you like to do that sort of thing. But you don't have to. Keep your carbs under 20, moderate protein. The rest of it's going to end up being fat and only eat when you're hungry. That's how you start the ketogenic diet. Um, I'm trying to scrape up some more before pictures. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for that. Uh, any of you who might be bigger people might have the same experience as I. It can be easier to find a photograph of Bigfoot than of a fat person, particularly if that fat person has any say in it whatsoever. You know, cameras come out, fat people disappear. Um, or better yet, they put themselves behind this, the magic fat pillow on the sofa, thinking that this pillow, if you put it over you, will cover over how fat you are. <laughs> Things we do. Anyway, I'm trying to find some more photos of myself that um, friends and family might have. Um, the same photos that I made them swear never to let me see or else I would go into a downward spiral and I'm not joking I couldn't see photographs of myself now I can I don't even recognize that person I'm trying to find some more photos I want you to know I'm 109 and a half pounds off of my highest weight if you are a person starting out this can be done I don't care how old you are if you're a young person, the weight might come off more quickly, but I'm gonna tell you, I think it's more challenging for young people to do this. If you're in your 20s and you're surrounded by other people in their 20s who it's nothing but pizza and midnight runs to Taco Bell, that's hard. So the weight might come off faster if you can stick to it. If you're older, it might, you're not probably not making so many midnight runs to Taco Bell, but the weight might come off slower, but it will happen. As you know, I'm a postmenopausal, middle-aged woman. We have been told nothing's going to work, so give it up. Easier for you to levitate off the ground than to lose weight if you're a postmenopausal, middle-aged woman. Um, it can be done. I am um, happy to answer as many questions as I can. I am considering setting up a little Skype session. I'll have to investigate how to do that. If people want to Skype a little one-on-one, -on -one, I would have to. I would have to try to set up some kind of fee for that because it would be time-consuming, uh, and maybe no one needs it. But I try to answer every question I get either on my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, or my blog. Um, to the best of my ability. I am going to be seeing, I'm going to a low carb support group meeting 
this evening. Uh, it's about an hour from our house. And I will be um, able to ask a couple of questions of Dr. Eric Westman. He's always very generous with his time. Um, so if it's today is Tuesday. So if you want to shoot me some questions, um, I'm happy to ask them. That was really kind of all I wanted to talk about. How to get started. Just start. Don't wait till Monday. Don't wait till the first. Don't wait until the holidays are over. You know, when I started from my absolute highest, and this was a long time ago, and there's a long tortured story of how I got from my absolute heaviest to a, a weight where I was when I started the ketogenic diet. I was a little bit off my heaviest by that point, but I'd gone up and down. It was December 18th, 2000 a week before Christmas? Why? I don't know. I hit bottom that day. I don't know. I, I'll have to really think about it and, and um, put pen to paper to analyze it. Why? What happened? Oh, why didn't I just wait till the first? But it's, I went to the gym and that was my victory that day. I, it actually, that was the day I went into the gym. The day before I'd gone to the gym, I couldn't get out of the car for fear and depression. I sat in my car and cried. But I considered it a victory that I'd gone. The next day I actually went in, <laughs> weighed myself. That was the opposite of a victory. Anyway, don't wait till the first. Don't wait till Monday. Don't wait till the holidays are over. Don't wait until your vacation is done. Don't wait until you get enough exercise in that you've lost a little start. Just stop eating carbohydrate. We don't need them. We don't need them. We don't need them for brain function. We don't need them to exercise. My husband is a cyclist. He is riding faster and more consistently now at his age. He's 56 than he did 10 years ago. And he's not eating a carbohydrate other than salad, you know, salads or cauliflower, or whatever, in two, over two years. And he does great. You don't need it. We don't need it. The farmers, no, we're not the farmers, the producers of grain want to tell us that we really, really need our grains. We don't. Anyway, that's a whole other story, and I'm probably going to eat some thumbs down. Cut out the carbs. Have a great day. I love my coffee. Those with Daniel.